If you have watched my custom car audio building videos before, you know that there are quite a few different tools that we use for custom fabrication. When I first got started, it seemed overwhelming all the different tools that I was going to need in order to get started. But knowing what I know now, there's a really good set of core tools that I would recommend for you guys in order to start off and get amazing results. What is that set of tools? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's get started. So first off, a disclaimer, I know that $1,000 worth of tools is no small drop in the bucket, so I wanna make it clear that if you only plan to ever do one car audio build, it's probably not worth it to invest in these tools. It might be more worth it to have a professional build your system. But with that said, if you plan to do custom car audio as a hobby, or if you plan to do multiple vehicles, this is the video for you. Now, another thing is I'm not going to include common tools on this list. Things like jigsaws, circular saws, drills, and different hand tools. Those are all tools that can be used on various different projects outside of car audio. I wanna focus more on a car audio specific set of tools. Even though these are what I would consider car audio specific, these are also tools that could be used on other projects. So always consider all these different tools as an investment. All right, so the first car audio building tool I wanna to take a look at is the router. If you're unfamiliar with what a router does, basically it has a collet inside here that rotates and spins, but the real flexibility and advantage of a router is that we can load many different router bits. Different router bits allow us to accomplish different tasks for custom fabrication, and you can see that I have a full row of them on the wall behind me. There's a lot that you can use. Now to get started, I actually recommend that you go with one of these cordless battery powered routers. The technology on these has come a long way. Now I'm not saying that you necessarily need to get this Makita version. If you have other power tools that are already in the 18 volt lineup, you should probably get whatever router you've already invested into the battery system for. But if you are starting fresh, I definitely like this Makita version. The reason I recommend that you start with a battery powered router is that this is something that we're going to be able to use even further down the line, even if we do upgrade to an electrical plug-in style router. And a quick side note so that we can save some time and not be listing model numbers, I do have a list of all the different tools that I'm recommending in this video down in the video description. Not only are we gonna be able to use this in a router table application, I'm gonna show you this in a second, we can also use this in a handheld application. So really versatile for two different styles of router tool that you can use starting up to save a little bit of budget. Now I mentioned this tool, this is the X route from Mobile Solutions. And what's super cool about this is we can mount our handheld router to this and it gives us the flexibility to use the router in a couple of different ways. We can use it to guide the router along a template. We're gonna be talking more about templates, but templates allow us to incorporate different design geometry within a build. But the other huge advantage of the X route is we can turn our handheld router into a router table. The outside profile of the X route is based on some of the more expensive router lifts. So the other cool thing is when you make yourself your own router table, you're gonna cut a profile on the outside here in order to allow this to sit down in. But since that profile is the same as some of the more expensive router lifts, when you go to upgrade in the future, it's not like you're needed to make a new hole in your custom router table you could swap out to that more advanced router lift if need be, and then you could dedicate this to being used in its handheld application with your handheld router. So again, a lot of my initial purchases that I'm recommending for you guys are going to allow you to upgrade in the future, but still have something that is beneficial for you to use. Now to go along with this router, we're of course going to need all of those different router bits. And that could definitely seem overwhelming when you see all the bits behind me, but I actually teamed up with Mobile Solutions and came up with a really good entry level tray that has a lot of functionality for the initial bits that you should use. Now the first thing to notice right off the bat is these handheld routers, 99% of the time they use a quarter inch shank collet, which means that the shank of each of these router bits is a quarter inch. So this tray is designed with that in mind, all of the router bits on this tray are quarter inch shank. This tray has a ton of functionality. First of all, we have a rabbiting bit, which is when we want to cut a notch into the material. But here's the important part. Because we can change the bearing on top of this rabbiting bit, we have a lot of functionality with how far we can cut into the workpiece. 
This is advantageous because let's say that we're designing a pocket for a piece of acrylic to sit behind an insert on a beauty panel. We could change that size as need be. Let's say that we're trying to shrink down an insert that's inside of another shape in order to properly account for material thickness around the outside. Having all those different bearings is definitely advantageous. The same goes for when we're using our flush trim bit. The flush trim bit is most of the time going to be used to cut something flush. So let's say that we were using a template and we wanted to transfer a template shape to a piece of wood. We would stick this to the piece of wood and we would allow that bearing to ride around the template and cut the surface below. But again, we have a lot more bearings that we can work with here. Imagine if we swapped out this flush bearing and we went to an oversized bearing. What that would allow us to do is we could make a size that is bigger, as an example, let's say we we're cutting this circle, we could cut around and make a larger circle. So having all these different bearings and the rabbiting bit and the flush trim bit just gives us a ton of different functionality when it comes to creating different shapes oversizing them and shrinking them. Now the other two router bits that are on this tray are a chamfer bit and a roundover bit. These are both profiling bits that allow you to change the shape on the inside or outside of an insert. That way we can give it a lot more unique look and you're not just having hard corners as part of your wood inlays. The other thing I really like about this kit is it does come with the tray, so it allows you to easily identify the oversized and undersized values as you change out these different bearings. But the other thing that's really important to understand about this kit, because I know there can be a little bit of sticker shock when you compare this against you know, the big box store router bits, these router bits are really, really high-end router bits. They're going to last you for a long, long time. I think I've had this kit for probably seven or eight years now and I use these all the time and I've never had to replace a bit. They are still super, super sharp. It's definitely a huge difference. Any of you guys out there that have ever used a really bad router bit, you know that especially with MDF, since it's such an abrasive material, you might cut something one time and that bit is already burning up and it's just not sharp at all anymore. These are definitely high-end router bits. And even if you do need to, eventually you could have a machine shop sharpen the cutting flutes on these. Now, much like you wanna use good router bits when it comes to custom car audio, you also want to make sure that you're using good wiring for your car audio build. So I do want to take a quick second to thank our monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. New Concepts has a wide variety of different wire and wire accessories on their website. I really love using all of their OFC wiring. It's super flexible and I do love their distribution blocks as well. They're very simple in design, which makes them easy to use and reliable. They also have a full lineup of different signal wires and speaker wires. So if you guys want to learn more about them and get wiring for your next car audio build, check out that link down in the video description. All right, moving on, more car audio tools to get you started for under 1K. We talked about it a little bit, but we are definitely going to want a couple of different sets of templates. So the first set I have on the table in front of me here, and this is an eight piece set, and these are the ARC templates. Again, these are from Mobile Solutions, and you can see that this is a varying curvature of ARC. They have kind of this slight curvature here all the way up to a much more pronounced curvature like this. So what are these templates used for? Well, the ARC templates are really good for coming up with different shapes that you can use in a car audio build. I use these all the time to create different design geometry and inserts and different parts of a beauty panel to make a car audio build look amazing. A couple of design details on these templates. So first of all, they all have a number on them. This is number eight. And that first one I showed you is number one. What's good about the number is when I'm laying out my design geometry and going through the shape making stage, I like to record that number. It's just a good way to remember which template you are using as you go to make each cut on the router. So the way these are used is you take a template and then you take your double-sided template tape and you're gonna stick the one side of it to the back side of the template and you're gonna stick it to a workpiece. And your workpiece could be wood, it could be a piece of plastic, it could even be a piece of aluminum depending on what different router bits you're going to be using to cut the material, but you're going to then take it to your router and you're going to go through the router. And if you're using something like a flush trim bit, like we talked about earlier, that bearing is going to ride against the template surface and cut the same exact shape that you are transferring. 
The great thing about these arc templates is they're really easy to match to in-vehicle design geometry. So if you're trying to carry over the same design DNA that exists in a vehicle, it's very easy to match up with this range of arcs. There are different arcs that Mobile Solutions offers, but this set that I have here on the table is definitely what I recommend to start out with. While we're on the topic of templates, there's a couple of other sets that I definitely recommend, and those are both focused on cutting circles. In car audio, we're obviously always cutting circles for our different speakers, but you'll even find that a lot of different design geometry will have rounded corners where obviously that's just part of a circle. So the two different sets that I recommend are the full combination circle set, which gives you varying sizes from this all the way up to this, along with this set here that Mobile Solutions has. This is the smart circle system. So this comes as a kit. You can see that this gives you a variety of different circle sizes on the inside diameter here, which is great for speaker cutouts, but it also gives you this full tray of the positive circles that are from the inside of each of those. And what's nice about these is, again, we can use these for laying out our different design geometry. These have a really small hole on the middle there, so we can take a pencil, we can put the pencil lead through that, and we can run this up against the side of a template, which will allow us to transfer design geometry. This has a ton of different uses. One example would be in the inside of a trunk, if you're trying to match the sidewall by making a floor piece, you could take one of these smaller ones and you could run it up against that edge and transfer it to a piece of paper, which you then transfer to a piece of wood, and now you have a nice matching piece that would go in the trunk. So the smart circle system, another one of my most used tools that I definitely recommend for you guys getting started. Now, when we're getting started with custom car audio, we definitely want to make sure that we stay safe. So when we are working in a router table application, imagine that this is mounted in our router table, we want to stick our workpiece to this guy here. This is a router shield. Let's say that I was transferring this circle template to a piece of wood I needed to make a speaker ring. Rather than getting my fingers close to the router bit and working with this small little ring, instead what I can do is I would stick this to my workpiece like normal, a piece of wood, but then I would stick the top side of it to my router shield. And the advantage of this is now I'm keeping my hands nice and safe away from the bit as I do my work. If there is any one tool that you should prioritize on this list, it's the router shield. Guys, the router is not to be messed with, especially when you're learning. Learn to use using the router shield. There is no shame in it. I still use this all the time because again, it gives you such good control over the workpiece. A lot of times you can get even better results than having that slight little chatter because you did it handheld with this you just have so much more control. For this next tool, I don't have it on the table in front of me because I've upgraded on this particular tool, but I definitely recommend that you guys get good dust collection. On the channel a long time ago, I showed you guys how I made a DIY dust collection system. And what's most important with a dust collection system is you need a good separator, a nice cyclone separator. With that DIY version that I built, you basically have your dust collection cyclone system in between your normal shop vac and whatever tool you are sucking the dust away from. I know this might not seem like a big deal, you know, after all, it's just dust, who cares, right? But I'm telling you guys, not having dust in your work environment makes a huge difference when it comes to the quality of your work. And really, I don't know about you guys, but kind of almost your willingness to work because when I'm working on custom car audio, I don't like to be completely covered in itchy dust. I don't like to be inhaling any of that. I wanna make sure that I'm safe and I have a nice respirator on, which is another good thing to look at investing in your initial tool set, but if I can avoid that dust with a small investment right off the get-go, it makes me one, like I said, a lot more willing to work because I'm not covered in the dust. And two, I'm not constantly spending a bunch of time sweeping up dust. You don't have dust all over your shop or all over your garage, all over your different, you know, storage things that you might have in your shop. Long story short, it's a great idea to catch that dust at the source and you should build a small DIY dust collection system right from the beginning. Now there are gonna be some small random little things that you should definitely pick up as part of your initial investment in tools. A couple of those things, first off, our template tape. It's always a good idea to have this in different thicknesses. So this is like three quarter inch thick, 
this is half inch thick, this is quarter inch thick. A good idea to have those different thicknesses for you know, different templates that you're going to be using. Something like an arc template, I'd probably use some thicker pieces to hold this in place. But something like a circle template, this is a little bit thinner, so I'd probably have to use the half inch template tape in order to stick this to my workpiece. Another good thing you definitely want on hand is good high quality CA glue. CA glue, which is commonly referred to as super glue, is going to allow you to glue different aspects of your project together really quickly, which is going to save you time and make sure that you get a good activator as well. What you'll do is you'll use the glue on your surface, you'll apply the activator to the other surface that's going to mate together, and then you stick the two together. And depending on the glue, Make sure you pay attention because it is going to set super quickly. So that's an important tip. If you do need to line something up, it might be better to just only apply the glue, stick it in place, really get it lined up the way you want to, and then hit the activator on the outside of it. The activator is gonna work its way in and it's going to cure really quickly and stick whatever you're sticking together in place. So with this set of tools, you are definitely going to be off to a great start when it comes to building custom car audio. Don't forget that I've provided links for all of this down in the video description and also be sure to check out our show sponsor, New Concepts, next time you need wiring and wiring accessories for your car audio build. A big thanks to them along with Mike, Jerry, Mo, William and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible so that we can keep making them. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and watching and I'll catch you in the next one.